Uh, I, I'm not, I'm just gonna be real. I'm trying to learn how to accept love how it comes to me. Um, but sometimes that backfires because uh, I don't know how to take compliments and sometimes compliments to me are real fucking mean. Yeah. <laughs> People think they're being nice and I'm like, go fuck yourself, yeah. Like a guy at a bar recently looked at me and was like, hey man, you're an uncle, right? <laughs> You're an uncle? Go, go to fucking hell! Like, how dare you? And yeah, I am. How'd you know? Um, yeah. I think what he was trying to say is that, like, I look like a bunch of guys who aren't doing well, okay? Like, yeah. I'm what happens when you set the economy on fire every eight years since the 80s, okay? Like, you end up with a bunch of guys who look like forgotten, like, creative characters from Tony Hawk Pro Skater, okay? Like, you're like, oh, he's from the My Hip Hurts edition. Cool. You know? Uh, I, I mean, I am an uncle. I got nephews. I also do a lot of uncle shit. You know? Like, that's, that's fair. Like, if we went to a 7-Eleven from sight, I could tell you what the safe hot dogs are. Okay? Like, that's pretty uncle. Uh... I buy R-rated movie tickets for kids I don't know, like all the time, okay? Like, yeah, that's uncle shit. One time I was in Denver, I was on tour with some comics, you'd be like, why were you hanging out with the comics that night? The answer is, watch the rest of the show and imagine us all in a car for eight hours. Not fun. And uh, I was like, fuck, I'm going to the movies. I was standing in line at the movies, playing words with friends, standing in front of these two teenagers in line, and I finally got up to the front of the, the kiosk where you ask for the tickets. And I was like, uh, I want one for Terrifier 2. I want to watch a clown eat some people. And I heard the worst thing that a man who looks like me could ever hear, which is, I'm going to need to see some identification. No, the fuck you do not, okay? Like, if this is the body of a 15-year-old, that's a 15-year-old who is going to die. <laughs> You know, let him into whatever movie he wants to see, you know? And then I realized, I was like, oh, he's not talking to me. He's talking to those two teenagers that were standing in front of me without missing a beat. I was like, don't worry about it. They can get in. They're my kids. And uh, I knew I fucked up immediately. Because <laughs> the guy looked at me, his face drained of blood. He was like, they're your kids? I looked over. I was like, oh, those are two Guatemalan teenagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But also, like, it's 2024. You don't know who the fuck I could pull. I could be their dad. You know, like... Maybe their mom has a fetish and a dominant trait. I don't know. <laughs> like, and I was like, no, they're my kids. And he said it again. Like, they're your children. And that's what I remembered the one time I looked up from Words With Friends and saw those two teenagers in line furiously making out with each other. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just behind him like, ooh, uh, eight letter score, fuck yeah. And in that moment, we all had a choice to make. None of us were at our best, okay? Like those kids could have been like, we don't know that weirdo, we're going to a PG-13 movie. But what they said is, yeah, he's our dad. Okay? Like, yeah. Have you ever wanted to see an R-rated movie so bad you leaned into incest? <laughs> Not me, okay? <laughs> like, you know, what I should have done is been like, oh yeah, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not their dad, I'm their stepdad, but they're definitely related. Uh, I'm not gonna tell another man how to raise his kids, guys. That's not who I am. <laughs> I, I think the most uncle thing about me is that I miss drug dealers. <laughs> okay, let me explain this. <laughs> Here's the thing, I, I'm from Georgia, all right? And in Georgia, like, I, I don't know. People will like to say shit like, man, drug dealers were so annoying. You went over to their house and they like show you their collection of snakes. <laughs> Some of us don't have friends. That was nice, okay? Like, that was a Sunday afternoon. I went over, I got free weed, and I saw some reptiles. Fuck you. Do you know what my dispensary has? Taxes. <laughs> Significantly worse, okay? I don't know. I don't, my life's not hard, I'm white, that's, you know, you noticed, it's okay, like, I, I, here's the thing, like, there's this, mo there's this movement, I think, right now, with white dudes to try to pretend we have it hard, we don't, it's okay, like, we don't, it's fine, but they're always like, ah, there's racism, there's reverse racism, and I'm like, it's not an Uno card, okay, like, no, one, no one's ever been shot for reverse racism, you know? What? Racism against white people is always something that's just like a friend bitching at you in a petty way. You know, it's always sort of like, hey, you got a small dick. I'm like, okay, some ladies like that. Okay, like, you know? A lot of ladies like it that they know when it feels good, that was intentional. I had to try. Okay? Like, yeah. Yeah. Anybody here like dick and ever been with a dick that thought being big was enough? Yeah, they're not laughing, they're going, ugh, from what they experienced.
experience. <laughs> I think the one version of racism against white people that I'm actually frustrated about is the idea that we don't season our food. <laughs> oh yeah, you're like, he's going there, okay? Like, I'm sorry guys, I'm not, I know this isn't the thing I should be mad about about that, but like, white people didn't commit a hundred genocides not to find paprika, okay? Like, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Here's what happened. Here's what happened. This is my conspiracy theory. I think in the 60s and the 50s, the government went into like better homes and gardening and like reduced the seasoning in our recipes to make us angrier, okay? Because if you want to know where racism really comes from with white people, unless you grew up with it, okay? I'm from the South, okay? We criminalized whistling. We understand racism, okay? <laughs> Not me, my grandparents, fuck them. <laughs> but if you want to know where racism comes from right now, it's heartburn. <laughs> yeah! Like, have you ever known a cool white guy at work and then he turns like 55 and suddenly he's a prick about everything? That's heartburn, okay? Like, because what white people don't have is a culture about talking about what's happening to us, okay? So if we experience pain, we bury it deep, 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 deep down. You ever heard of an ulcer? That's what happens when a white person buries a question so long, their stomach explodes, okay? <laughs> And then one day you're like, I don't know, I'm 45 and I had a piece of pizza and you're like, ah, shit, I feel terrible. Ah, I need to go to bed at nine and watch Fox News. That's where racism, <laughs> that's where racism comes from. The first time a good white man said, I fucking hate Indians was after a buffet, okay? <laughs> like, he doesn't need an intervention. He needs to know about Tums and Prilosec, okay? Like, I know what happened for me when my very, very sweet aunt got on Facebook and was like, there is a conspiracy, there is a pedophile cannibal cult in the basement of a pizza place in Washington, D.C. And I was like, oh yeah, I understand where this is coming from. Aunt Susan's natural enemy is pizza. Uh, I, did, I took that too far, that's okay. <laughs> I uh, get accused of irony a lot. <laughs> that's, I don't know. I have a face that looks like I don't mean what I'm doing. And I know that uh, because I once got yelled at for a t-shirt I got at a funeral. I'll explain, okay. Some of you are like, you got a t-shirt at a funeral? And that's because you've never mourned a black loved one in the South. Um, <laughs> when, I was, when I was 21, <laughs> when I was 21, I had a, a co-worker who was an African-American died for the first time and I went to a black funeral for the first time. And I will be honest with you, I had never experienced mourning like that because Baptists don't cry at our funerals. We just sit there and go like, She'd be very proud of how much I'm not reacting to this. <laughs> okay, like, black funeral, there was someone who's like, put me in the coffin with her! I'm like, oh my god. You've never missed someone that much, you know? And then I went into the basement for the reception, and I was given an airbrushed t-shirt with my friend's face on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know how bad Earth is for black people? They view heaven as Panama City Beach. Okay? Like, and I was like, I'm gonna put it on. This is gonna be who I am. And I wore it. And I, I first, I thought I was experiencing racism against a white person who had a black friend. Because when I wore it out in public, people would look at me like, that motherfucker. <laughs> and then one day, an old black woman walked up to me and was like, I don't think you should be wearing that t-shirt, son. And I was like, I'm sorry, why? And she's like, I don't think you should wear a funeral shirt, ironically. <laughs> Yeah, there's no polite way to respond to that, you know? So I did what anyone would have done. I looked at her very respectfully. I was like, it's okay, uh, I can wear this shirt. I had a black friend. <laughs> uh, my name is John Michael Bond. Have a good day.